table? Yeah. You did. No, I didn't. Here, on the school and town warrant, 2020. Welcome to the viewers at home on Channel 22, and those who have come out to this beautiful, brand new facility, our nice auditorium, Hanford Academy. I want a round of applause. I certainly appreciate all the work that's gone into getting this set up tonight. I'd like to have Superintendent Kathleen Murphy lead us into the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. Starting to my far right and to your left in the audience at home, I'd like our members to introduce themselves to the public, please. Jimmy Bridal Russell, school board representative. Stephen LaBrange. Russell Bridal, selectman's rep. Mike Moore, vice chair. Brian Warburton, chairman. Steve Henderson. As a little anecdote, I thought I would surprise Mrs. Bridal Russell. 25 years ago this week, Jenny chaired the budget committee in town. So it just goes to show you, Jenny How can that be where I'm only 35? <laughs> <laughs> and I got another one for you. Keith Lassard was on the budget committee, and I was on the way to be a selectman, I guess, and Mike and everybody else. But it just goes to show you the, the dedication to public service, I guess. But I thought I'd uh, bring that up. Thank you. Uh, what we're going to do, I'm going to go over a few ground rules for everyone tonight. Remind everyone on the board here for the Hampton Budget Committee and the folks in the audience, this is a public hearing. This is feedback from you, the public, to give to us, the people watching the meeting. It is not to be in a debate back and forth between Budget Committee members and the audience. If a person comes to the microphone and has a question, I would ask that the question be uh, add to the chair, and I then will ask town management or school management the areas of expertise that can come up and answer that question. Um, I think that's going to work very well. We would ask that when you come up, there is a booklet at the podium, if you could sign your name and address for the record, Mrs. Kravitz, a great administrative assistant down the end here has done a wonderful job, and she'll be taking those and adding to the minutes for this evening. Our first order of business is going to be Supervisory Administrative Unit 90, the Hampton School District. I will read all the Warren articles one by one. We'll start off with the first one, and then we'll take uh, comments, and then go to second, third, and fourth. Does anybody on the uh, board have any uh, questions at this time? Thank you. To the inhabitants of the school district of the town of Hampton and the county of Rockingham, state of New Hampshire, qualified to vote upon district matters. You are hereby notified to meet in two separate sessions of the school district annual meeting as follows. The first session delivered session in the cafeteria at the Hampton Academy, 29 Academy Ave in Hampton on Tuesday, February 4th, 2020 at 7 p.m. for the explanation, discussion, debate, and possible amendment of the following articles. So it's very critical that pe folks also come to deliver a session for SAU 90 here on Tuesday, February 4th. Our first Warren article. Number one, shall the school district raise and appropriate as an operating budget, not including appropriations by special Warren articles and other appropriations voted separately, the amount set forth on the budget posted with the warrant, or as amended by vote of the first session, for the purposes set forth therein, totaling 23,789,112. Should this article be defeated, the default budget shall be $23,703,302, which is the same as last year with certain adjustments required by previous action of the district or by law or by the governing body may hold one special meeting in accordance with RSA 40 colon 13, Roman numeral X, Roman numeral uh, 16, to take up the issue of a revised operating budget. Recommended by the school board, 5-0. Recommended by the budget committee, 8-0. Do I have anyone from the public wishing to speak to the school budget? Hearing none, we will go to article. Yes. You are, okay. 
Mr. Jones. Good evening. I have not looked at the law itself, but I have looked at... Um, Can you state your name and address, sir? Forgive me. I'll try to speak louder. <coughs> Timothy Citizen Jones, 16 Dustin Avenue, Hampton, New Hampshire. I have a, uh, a document from a famous law group in Concord. Um, talking about the default budget law changes that took place in uh, late 2018. And one of the points they're making here is that, the, and apparently it only applies to schools, although I don't understand why only the school. It says uh, one of the requirements of the new law is it requires the school board to not only disclose the default budget at the first public hearing, but also to prevent, present the default budget for questions and answers. So it's a procedural point that I wanted to make. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Anyone else? Hearing none, we'll go on to Article 2. Shall the school district vote to approve the cost items included in the collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hampton School Board and the Seacoast Educational Association covering the four-year period from July 1st, 2020 to June 30th, 2024, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at the current staffing levels over those paid in the prior fiscal year. 2020 to 2021, estimated increase, $433,336. 2021 to 2022, $469,392. 2022 to 2023, $483,817. 2023 to 2024, $493,033. And further raise and appropriate the sum of $433,336 for the 2020-21 fiscal year, such sum representing the additional cost attributable to the increase in salaries and benefits required by the new agreement over those that would be paid at current staff levels in accordance with the most recent collective bargaining agreement. Recommended by the school board, four, zero, one abstention. Recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee, seven, zero, one abstention. Before I recognize Superintendent Murphy, I do want to explain, because I'm sure there's people asking, both Mr. DeLuca from the school board and myself as chairman of the Budget Committee and a member have wives who work in the Hampton School District. We abstain, which is the right thing to do. So just so that people know that. The chair recognizes Superintendent Kathleen Murphy to speak on the collective bargaining uh, issues. Good evening, Superintendent Murphy. Uh, good evening, Chairman, and thank you for the opportunity to speak to this article. I just thought that given the, uh, a four-year contract that it, it deserved attention to you, and we did that at our hearings, but also to the general public. So um, I'll try to be brief, but um, highlight the major points of this contract. Um, as you can see, and as our Chair just read, it is a four-year, a, uh, a proposed four-year agreement with our Teachers Association. Uh, currently, we uh, the uh, uh, we have 119 uh, professional members under this agreement. Uh, in this agreement, the four year, the cost of living in the first year is a 3% cost of living for our teachers. The second year is a 2.25 cost of living. The third year, 2.25, and in the third, uh, fourth year, 2.5. Those are the um, percentage increase, cost of living raises for our teachers during the terms of this proposal. In receiving the cost of living increases, our teachers made many concessions in health insurance for one. Uh, the dis the, they decreased uh, uh, their, um, we, dec we were actually benefit because they um, gave back more money in their health insurance. So over the course of this term of this contract, there will be a 4% decrease. Uh, we'll, we will see that as a, a school district, the teachers um, will um, uh, see uh, a responsibility to pay more into their health insurance. 
Uh, and also, because of their efforts as consumers in our health plan, they have worked very hard to help costs down. Over the last 10 years, we've averaged only a 1.6% increase in health insurance as an average annually over the course of the 10 years. So that's pretty pretty special in that health insurance only going up an average of 1.6. In addition to asking for increases uh, with the cost of living, um, they also made some other sacrifices. Our teachers all receive a, a tuition stipend, but in doing so this year, instead of asking for additional monies around staff development, professional development, and training, they're using their course reimbursement money uh, to, to do that instead of using the full allotment that they have for tuition. So they sacrifice those monies uh, in, in that particular account. One thing for everyone to, to be aware of is that um, in a district uh, like Hampton, we're always in competition with other districts. Uh, we are neighbors next door at SAU 21, including uh, Seabrook and North and South Hampton, Hampton Falls, Winnicunnant. We, we have to be competitive. Uh, if we are going to attract uh, the top teachers, then we need to be able to be con competitive in salaries. But in addition to our neighbors over 21, we have right next door Exeter, Portsmouth, uh, Rye, and Greenland. So again, this was our way to stay competitive in the field and attracting the best and brightest in our district. The other feature that was really important in this contract was consistency. We believe that the consistency of our staff is what has made us so great. They stay with us, they, 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 many of them, their career is here. And with that, they bring years of experience, knowledge in the practice. And so the board, uh, in negotiations with the Teachers Association, felt that longevity was really important. We spend a lot of money when we have new teachers. We have to train them, we assign them mentors. There's quite a bit of money. So if our teachers stay with us, that helps us to, to sort of settle that, that account in terms of new teachers. By keeping our teachers here, rewarding their longevity, uh, we have a very experienced and professional staff. So um, the board has uh, incentivized uh, the longevity for teachers, um, and hopefully they'll stay with us for a long term. Many of you say, well, we spent all these dollars. What are the outcomes? What do we get for the dollars that we spend every year, and in particular, this particular contract? Well, the district has very high expectations and standards for all employees, and we do have that. We hire the best and the brightest. We have high quality instruction, providing cutting edge programs and instruction. Our teachers are, are pros at the work they do every day in the classroom. Then we look at student performance. And what are the results? And year after year, our results and the ranges in our results show that our kids score 15 to 30 percent higher than the state average year after year in math and in reading. Those are pretty strong results. And there's a direct correlation between the classroom teacher that stands and the support teachers that stand in those rooms and support our kids every day. There's a direct correlation between uh, the students' performance and those folks that stand in the classroom. One more thing that's really pretty, pretty neat about Hampton and the district is our before and after school programs. Um, our, our kids have terrific opportunities for an extended day. Um, this, just this week I was sitting in a meeting, a uh, PE teacher over here at Hampton Academy, she opens up her gym at 7.20. The kids are in there, they have gym before they even start their day. She doesn't have to do that. I mean, she does it because she knows, one, that physical education is really important and giving the kids exercise. But it's an opportunity for kids to come early, in early, connect with the teacher, and um, start their day off on the right foot. After school is a tremendous amount of um, opportunities for our kids with clubs and athletics. Um, but, but, but these things don't happen without our teachers. So I suppose I could go on and on, ladies and gentlemen, about this valuable resource that we have in our teachers and our classroom support areas. Um, but I want to ensure you that the future of your community um, lies in the hands of our teachers. Um, and because of that, our kids are able to reach their full potential. So thank you for giving me this minute to talk about the contract, because I think it's very important. Thank you so much, Superintendent Murphy. Uh, just a pause for a moment. Uh, we had a bit of housekeeping. We should have been done before Kathleen Murphy spoke. I accept a motion by Mr. Pluff, seconded by Mr. Brido, to allow non-residents to speak. All those in favor? 
Unanimous. Thank you. It's a good thing you would have had to delete everything I said. <laughs> <laughs> that still sounds you know, okay. still good. <laughs> but just for we have a clear, uh, clear record. So, uh, but thank you uh, so much, and I know you worked hard. Does anybody else uh, want to speak on the collective bargainings? Okay, hearing none, we'll go to Article 3. Shall the school district vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $300,000 to continue long-term maintenance, repair and modernization work to include technical and or engineering services at Hampton's Marston and Center School buildings and grounds. This article is a continuation of an annual program planned to keep the buildings updated and in good condition, thereby protecting the taxpayer's investment. Projects planned for 2020 to 2022 are listed below. This will be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32 colon several Roman numeral six and will not lapse until these projects are completed or June 30th, 2022, whichever is earlier. Recommended by the Hampton School Board, five to nothing. Recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee, eight to nothing. Anyone from the public wishing to speak on Article 3? Hearing none. Article 4. Shall the school district vote to raise and appropriate funds in the amount of $43,975 to provide child benefit services in accordance with RSA 189-49 for students who are residents of the Hampton School District and attend Sacred Heart School located in Hampton, New Hampshire by petition recommended by the school board five to nothing, recommended by municipal budget committee five to nothing. Anybody want to speak to this? Eight, 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 eight to nothing, eight to nothing. Anybody wish to speak on it? All right, any closing comments by the public regarding the school uh, district budget? Mm -hmm. Take a break while the folks may want to go for the SAU 90 Hampton School District and then we'll continue with the town. Did she get enough signatures on the uh, MS form? Yes, she's going to get the others too. Okay. So we're all set with that. I did, I did want to mention for Mrs. Kravitz's sake, uh, the opening of the meeting, we had two absences, ex uh, two excused absences from the Hampton Village District and also uh, Joyce Scopertis uh, for the budget committee. And I did not hear from Mr. Mara, so I hope he's okay. Um, so David Mara is absent. to the budget committee now that we go on to the town of Hampton warrant remember the public hearing is for those articles that involve money to them so we'll start with article 10 if I could ask you to page 4 of 20 on the handout thank you Christy Fulham and town manager Welch for the great work on this Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $125,000 for the purpose of contracting professional services for the completion of a comprehensive update of the town of Hampton master plan? The purpose of a master plan is to guide the overall character, physical form, and development of a community and is required by law to be updated periodically. Hampton's master plan has had only occasional updating since its inception in 1985. As Hampton is the most vulnerable town in the seacoast in several respects, such as flooding, potential impacts from sea level rise, drainage problems, etc., it is essential to update our master plan at its entirety in order to meet more recent challenges and to better plan for the future. 
A professionally developed, forward-looking master plan is needed to preserve, protect, and enhance property values and the quality of life of Hampton residents and to enable the town to qualify for grants for projects that are otherwise financially beyond what the town can afford. The master plan update will be conducted with the assistance of qualified professional consultants and will include a robust public participation process. The town has already been successful in securing grant funding in the amount of $45,000 from other sources to accomplish specific parts of this project. The additional $125,000 must be raised and appropriated through this article to provide for the concurrent completion of all master plan components resulting in a plan that is fully current, comprehensive, and user-friendly. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation for RSA 32-7, Roman numeral 6, and shall not lapse until the purpose of this article is completed or by December 31st, 2023, whichever is sooner. Recommended by the Planning Board, 7 to nothing. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 5 to nothing. Recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee, 8 to nothing. Fiscal impact note from the Finance Department, the estimated 2020 tax impact on 125000 is point, .033 cents per $1,000 valuation. So 3.3 .3 cents per $1,000 of valuation. I would like to recognize our town planner, Jason Bashan, to uh, come to the microphone to speak to the master plan. Good evening, Mr. Bashan. Good evening. Um, so this is the article that has resulted in many months of discussion and input from our master plan steering committee, which has gone through several iterations. And that steering committee evolved from back in June from master plan sessions, which we began. Um, so it's been an ongoing process for the past seven or eight months that we've uh, really been engaging uh, in various activities leading up to this article. Uh, this article requests a sum of $125,000 for a full comprehensive update. This figure was derived through a comparison of master plan costs in several other nearby communities, while also looking at the population and valuation of those communities. We also obtained estimates from consultants. Uh, this information was evaluated by the Master Plan Steering Committee and was unanimously support, who unanimously supported the article. Uh, we believe this article clearly and concisely uh, summarizes its purpose and highlights why an updated comprehensive master plan is so urgently needed at this time. Some key points include that it's required by law to be updated periodically, uh, that the need the need is there to meet recent challenges to better plan for the future. It will help preserve and protect and enhance property values and the quality of life of residents, enable the town to qualify for grants for projects that would otherwise be unaffordable, as the article itself has stated. Uh, important note is there will be a very robust public participation process. Um, and also we have secured $45,000, as the article um, indicates, um, for, um, from other sources for specific parts of that project. Specifically, that's the vision and the coastal management elements of the project. Uh, and that funding must be used exclusively for those purposes. Um, the additional 125,000 will ensure the concrete <laughs> completion of all those ma other master plan components that will result in, in a full um, user-friendly plan. Um, in advance of this article, the Master Plan Steering Committee has developed a preliminary master plan survey that has been live now for a little over two months and remains accessible. Uh, members of the public can access that survey at publicinput.com backslash HMPS1, and we would encourage you to do so and share your thoughts with us. Um, we've received some very valuable information so far, and would encourage anyone who has not completed the survey to do so at their earliest convenience. Um, it's important to note that in, that information information will be utilized as we move forward with this very important project. Um, so we appreciate the continued support of the Budget Committee and, and members of the town and uh, hope that the public will support this very important uh, project. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bashan. Anyone else wishing to speak tonight? Welcome, Mrs. Woolsey. Good evening. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is a critical article for this community. Uh, Mr. Bichand and Mrs. Olivier have done an outstanding job in our planning department. But we need, and they need, the tools to do this work and to help us go forward. Uh, I know people complain about the building and the problems. This is one way to address that. And the planning board needs the guidance too, and bless their hearts, they put together a nice committee to oversee some of this uh, work. The current master plan is about two feet high with a bunch of gobbledygook in it. I don't know how anyone can be uh, expected to get something done. This should give us the tool for the planning board to be successful uh, and I am very proud of the um, planning, the town planner and his assistant and the planning board. Thank you for this. Please vote yes on Article 10. Thank you, Selectman Woolsey. Good evening, Mrs. Carnaby. Good evening. I'm Ann Carnaby. I'm shorter. There we go. Um, the big question that I get a lot about the master plan is, oh, is this one going to sit on the shelf and collect dust too? I would urge you to sit. Can't hear that better? OK. Um, the big question I get from people is, is this going to sit on the shelf and collect dust also? And the answer is no, because this master plan is going to be small enough, you can hold it in one hand, and it is going to be a road map for how the town grows in the next 15, 20 years, and it will be a guide to all of the boards and committees and groups of the town because the guide will be developed from input from all the citizens of the town, hence the survey. <coughs> Excuse me. I watched the Board of Selectmen the other night, as I do most weeks, um, wrestle with roads and drainage and sewage and water and buildings and a lot of what they are searching for will be guided by the new master plan for them. They can look at it and say, well, yeah, the town wants this, but it really wants that first. And, and it will give an order to the process. It will give vital information to the selectmen and to the rest of the boards about how the town wants to see it grow in the next 15 years. So I would urge you to not only vote for Article 10, yes, but take the survey. Um, it's a top button on the town website. Just have to click on it and the survey is there. You'll see our little mascot, the town crier in his red jacket, um, because it is news for the town. And tell us what you think the town should look like in the next 15 years. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else? Mr. Jones. Mr. Chairman, I'm wondering what would happen if the co actual cost exceeds the, appro the proposed appropriation of 125000 What will happen if the actual cost exceeds that? I could refer that question. Uh, Mr. Bashan, do you want to take the, that question? What would happen if the cost exceeded 125000 Well, as I had indicated earlier when I had spoken, that um, we had done some due diligence on this. We, we spoke with other communities. We um, thought, heard from consultants. So we did our research on this, and we know that that's a solid number. We feel very confident in that number. When we prepare our request for proposals for consultants for that, it's going to be in there. That's the number. It's not to exceed that number. So that, that's your assurance right there. Thank you, Mr. Bashan. Mr. Jones. 
So what happens if the expenses exceed 125? Do you just stop the work at that point? They don't award the contract. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bashan. So that's why you go through the process of, of reviewing consultants through your uh, for the request for proposals. They have an understanding going in what the cost is. They have to abide by that contract. That contract will state these things. I don't know how much more to add than that. It'll be all spelled out there. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Bashan. Mr. Jones. So I understand, Mr. Chairman, that it's a fixed rate contract that's going to be proposed, so there's no concern of going over, right? That's correct. Thank you. Anyone else on Article 10? We're going to skip to our next article, Article 13. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $30,000 to assist the Department of Public Works in the continued advancement for the Town's Asset Management Program for Waste Water Assets? Set appropriation to be offset by $30,000 in principal loan forgiveness under the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services Clean Water State Revolving Fund, SRF, and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to apply for, contract for, accept, and expand on any federal, state, or other available funds towards the project in accordance with the terms and conditions under which they are received, and to borrow in anticipation of the receipt of such and or the issuance of such bonds or notes as provided in the Municipal Finance Act, RSA 33, and to authorize participation in the State Revolving Fund, SRF, RSA 486 colon 14, established for the purpose and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to accept and expend such monies as they become available from the federal and state governments. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32 colon 7, 7, Roman numeral 6, and shall not lapse until the project is completed or by March 31st, 2022, whichever occurs sooner. Three-fifths vote required. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 5 to 0. Recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee, 8 to 0. Do I have anyone wishing to speak on Article 13? Hearing none. Let's skip to Article 15. Shall the Town of Hampton vote in rate to raise and appropriate as an operating budget, not including appropriations by special warrant articles and other appropriations voted separately, the amount set forth on the budget posted with the warrant as amended by vote of the first session for the purposes set forth therein, totaling $28,322,336. Should this article be defeated, the default budget shall be $28,335,036, which is the same as last year with certain adjustments required by previous action of the Town of Hampton or by law or the governing body may hold one special meeting in accordance with RSA 40 colon 13 Roman numeral 10 and Roman numeral 16 to take up the issue of a revised operating budget only. Majority vote required. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen five to nothing. Recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee eight to nothing. Do I have anybody wishing to speak to Article 15. Mr. Jones. I'm reading my mind, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, how much is the uh, NHMA dues this year in this budget? I'm, I'm sorry, would you ask that question again, sir? How much is the NHMA dues being proposed in this budget? I'd like to refer to Mr. Welch. Uh, could you ask, answer that question, Mr. Welch? How much any shim? The finance director, Christy Pulliam. Thank you. The question for the folks at home by Mr. Jones is the NHMA annual dues, how much is in the operating budget for 2020? Uh, 
$19,044. Quite, quite a sum of money that keeps increasing consider considerably every year, it seems. But rolled into that number is the town's uh, having access to a free seminar being delivered uh, as the town wishes. For years, that was not taken advantage of. It wasn't even known. It was uh, disclosed at a budget committee meeting about five years ago when we discovered that we had access to that. Uh, of course, the Board of Selectmen has total control over that at that time. And during the course of the year, the selectmen were good enough to let the budget committee uh, conduct a couple of seminars that were very informative, very useful. Last year, uh, we negotiated to, uh, with the Board of Selectmen to allow the Board of Selectmen to uh, let the budget committee just go ahead and make direct contact with NHMA to arrange the seminar. I was... Uh, I'm not sure exactly what I was, surprised or sad or whatever, that there was no such seminar this year again. And, and given that I consider that to be probably one of their most main benefits that they give us, of course their main function is not to give seminars, their main function, as they have admitted on camera, is to be a lobbying group for the Board of Select. We pay 19000 plus in 2020 so that Selectman can have a lobbying group at our state house. Now, I'm not just pointing them out, because there are others <coughs> in this budget that also perform lobbying group funded by taxpayers, which I find philosophically rather reprehensible. That I mean, I thought we had a special interest group in the state legislature as a result of our voting. But now we have to pay for people to go up and tell them what, we, what they ought to do instead of asking the voters. I don't oppose lobbying groups in general, I just oppose taxpayer funding lobbying groups in general. But I was able to nod and wink at that given the fact that we had a free seminar and it was very valuable. Enough value to actually justify the cost for the whole year as far as I was concerned. But if we're not going to use that, Mr. Chairman, I think the Budget Committee ought to, ought to consider striking that line item out. The Budget Committee Chair will take that under advisement. It is, it is a waste of money to pay for something and then not use the service or product that you're buying. Just a waste of money. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Anyone else on Article 15? Article 16, shall the Town of Hampton vote to approve the cost items included in the collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hampton Board of Selectmen and with the Hampton Professional Firefighters Association, Local 2664, IAFF, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at current staffing levels over the amount paid in the prior fiscal year. Estimated increase over previous year level as follows. 2020, 39 weeks, $87,623. 2021, 52 weeks, $118,455. 2022, 52 weeks, $125,166. 2023, 13 weeks, $29,054. And to further raise and appropriate $87,623 for the current fiscal year, such sum representing the additional costs attributed to the increase in salaries and benefits required by the new agreement over those that would be paid at current staffing levels, majority vote required, recommended by the Board of Selectmen, five to zero, recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee, eight to zero. Anyone wish to speak on the collective bargaining agreements for our firefighters? Hearing none, we will go to Article 817. Thank you. You know, I had my glasses on too. Remember I told you? Uh, it's a light. <laughs> it's a light, yeah. Article 17. 
Shall the Town of Hampton vote to approve the cost items included in the collective bargaining agreement reached between the Hampton Board of Selectmen and the Hampton Fire Department Supervisory Association affiliated with the Hampton Professional Firefighters Association, Local 2664 IAFF, which calls for the following increases in salaries and benefits at current staff and levels over the amount paid in the prior fiscal year estimated increase over previous year level 2020 39 weeks thirty one thousand seven hundred and forty two dollars 2021 52 weeks thirty eight thousand three hundred ninety eight dollars 2022 52 weeks thirty seven thousand seven hundred sixty nine dollars 2023 13 weeks nine thousand four hundred ninety nine dollars and to further raise and appropriate thirty one thousand seven hundred forty two dollars for the current fiscal year such sum representing the additional cost attributable to the increase in salaries and benefits required by the new agreement over those that would be paid at current staffing levels recommended by the board of selectmen five to nothing recommended by the municipal budget committee eight to nothing Fiscal impact note, finance department, the estimated 2020 tax impact on 31,742 is 0 0.008 per 1,000 valuation, which amounts to 8 tenths of one cent per thousand dollars of valuation. Anyone wishing to speak on this article? Mrs. Woolsey. Good evening, again, uh, with your kind uh uh, acceptance I want to address both 16 and 17 together we'll save a little time when I first moved here every firefighter lived in Hampton and the call firefighter force mostly came from the beach and when there was a, an accident or something happened in the river the men would bring their own boats to the rescue We've, we've put on a lot of years since the good old days, but this, these two sections of our fire department gave, give us a, an outstanding performance. They're always there for us. I am so proud of them, and this uh, department is worth every penny you spend, and we're very fortunate. Thank you, Mrs. Woolsey. Anyone else? Hearing none, Article 18. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $435,000 from the 1998 Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund previously established, established for the purpose of the survey, engineering, and design work for replacing the Winnicunnet Road and High Street sewer and closed drainage system mains, sewer services, then followed up by curbing, sidewalks, school zone, and pedestrian signage, street lights, traffic signage, paving of the entire roadway, and line painting. Whoa, what is going on? What's that noise? Hello? That's the feedback. Feedback again. Hold on for a second. Reconstruction of the roadway may ultimately include traffic calming structures or other improvements to assist in controlling the speed of vehicles. Okay. Thank you. Further to authorize the Board of Selectmen to apply for, contract for, accept and expend any federal, state, or local grants and funds towards the project in accordance with the terms and conditions under which they are received for the purpose of sidewalks, CMAC mitigation, state or federal highway funding, or hazard mitigation grants with said grants and funds to be added to the project and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to implement such cost-effective solutions as are presented in the future that they deem to be in the best interest of the town that they may result in lesser amount of expenditures than is authorized by this warrant and to authorize participation in the state revolving fund SRF RSA colon uh, 486 colon 14 established for the purpose and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to take any and all actions necessary to carry out the project in the best interest of the town. 
This will be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32,7, Roman numeral 6, and shall not lapse until the work is completed or by March 31st, 2024, whichever is sooner. Majority vote required, recommended by the Board of Selectmen, five to nothing, recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee, eight to nothing. Fiscal impact note, zero tax impact. Anybody wishing to speak to Article 18? Hearing none. Article 19. To see if the town will approve the Board of Selectmen entering to a three and a half year contract from July, 20, July 1st, 2020 through December 31st, 2023 with separate entities that have submitted bids for the collection, transport, and disposal of solid waste, recyclables, and construction and demolition waste from the town of Hampton with an annual increase in accordance with the Consumer Price Index Northeast Urban CPIU and to raise and appropriate the sum of $425,127 to cover the increases in contract costs for these services for the second half of 2020 over the 2020 budget amount of $615,659 that is included in both the operating budget and default budget figures in the operating budget warrant article 15 and the sum of $425,127 to come from the unassigned fund balance based on the bid prices and the increase in contract cost in accordance with the CPIU the established cost increase of the total fiscal year 2020 is $248,097. The contracts will entail the town using the entities contracted with for the entire three and a half year period. Majority vote required. Estimated increases over previous year's level. 2020, six months, $425,127. 2021, 12 months, $198,054. 2022, 12 months, $24,777. 2023, 12 months, $25,267. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen, five to nothing. Recommended by the Budget Committee, eight to nothing. Fiscal impact, no, zero tax impact. Anyone wishing to speak? To Article 19. Mr. Jones. Mr. Chairman, in reading this, it seems as though we already have contracts plural uh, on the table, right? Is that true? Would, would you repeat the question, please? Sure. Reading this article suggests that there are contracts, plural contracts, are already on the table, and this San Bernized Warren article is intended to approve those contracts. The chair will refer to Director Jacobs or Deputy Director Hale. Would you be able to answer Mr. Jones' question about multiple contracts? Just a yes or no, really. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, we have multiple uh, bids. Um, on the table. Thank you. Well, do you have have you selected bids from those multiple? Final bids have not been selected, nor have contracts been entered into. Okay. If the bids haven't been selected, and I assume they differ each of the bids, then how can the numbers in this article be accurate if we don't know the specific contracts that we're going to be embracing? The numbers given are based upon the. Um, average amount of trash that we get the in the culmination of the lowest combination of bids okay so my understanding is these numbers reflect the lowest bids that have been received for the respective services okay thank you for that and I assume that those contracts will be available to us to review prior to the delivery session no, or oh, they're just bids they're just bids in our contracts Okay. Mr. Chairman, normally when we do these increases like this, they go in the operating budget, the proposed, the proposed operating budget. Uh, we're doing a separate warrant article. 
Why the change? It's coming from the unassigned fund balance. Is that what your question? Okay. So we're just raising this purely from the unassigned fund balance. Thank you. I, th I think we got it, Fred. The chair recognizes. Did, did I misunderstand that? Okay. The chair Thank recognizes you. town manager Fred Welch. Mr. Welch, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the warrant article is here because of a, a change in the general laws of the state of New Hampshire, which requires us to synchronize these con contracts because they're for multiple years. We've taken the low bids, we've analyzed them, and this contract or this warrant article, if passes, will fund those contracts so that we can go ahead and issue them. Failing that, we will not have trash collection for part of that period of time. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Mr. Jones. Now, this is good, Fred, that we're synchronizing these contracts. I think all multi-year contracts by law have always been required to be synchronized in order to be multi-year bound, uh, multi bound, that is. Uh, so I'm glad to see that practice taking place here. Uh, what I don't see is that we're actually going to be taking this number from, from this warrant article, and I'm sure it will pass. I will support it. But it will also be going into next year's default budget, right? Mr. Chairman? I believe so, yes. Thank you. Before any more comments, we'd like to welcome our fine member, Mr. Mara, to the table. I was worried Thank about you. you, and welcome, David. Thank you. For the viewers at home, David Mara. Another outstanding member of this year's committee. We really enjoyed David's. Anybody else have any uh, comments on <coughs> Article 19? Article 20. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $850,000 for the purpose of replacing the Lock Road vitrified clay sewer line and the surface and closed drain sy drainage systems that services part of the street followed by the paving of the entire roadway said cost to include survey and engineering. Reconstruction of the roadway may include traffic, calming structures, or other improvements to assist in controlling the speed of vehicles. The application of new pavement will occur in the year following the installation of the sewer and drainage replacement systems to allow for the proper settlement of the excavated roadbed. This will be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32 colon 7, Roman numeral 6, and shall not lapse until the work is completed or by March 31st, 2024, whichever is sooner. Majority vote required. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 5 to nothing. Recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee, 8 to nothing. Fiscal impact note, the estimated 2020 tax impact on $850,000 is 0 0.226 per $1,000 valuation, 22.6 cents per $1,000 of evaluation. Anyone from the public wishing to speak on Article 20? Mr. Pierce. <clears throat> Thank you, Mike Pierce, 84 Lock Road. Um, I had my uh, sewer pipe cleaned out a while when I first moved in because it was clogged right where the town connects into my cast iron sewer pipe. And beyond that, which was part of the town sewer pipe, was clay. So I'm, my question is, when we replace this clay pipe, are we going to replace all the connectors going into the properties? Because the clay pipe on my property is a piece of garbage, okay? Putting it mildly. So my question is, when they replace it, the, the pipe, are they going to replace it right up to the existing connections going into the property, like my cast iron one? Thank you. Mr. Pierce, we'll have someone answer your question. Mr. Welch, would you come to the microphone and answer Mr. Pierce's question? Thank you. This is uh, This will replace all of the pipe that's in the public right-of-way. To replace pipe beyond the public right-of-way would be a violation of state law. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Well, a follow-up to that. What if it goes a little over the property line? Because I don't know where the property line is in relation to my clogged sewer pipe last year. I, I understand the problem, uh, but the problem is that the Supreme Court has ruled that we can only replace the pipe to the property line, yes. and that's as far as we can go with that effort. If, if the individuals who own private property beyond that 
wish to replace the pipe with on their private property, they have the obligation to do that. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Mr. Pierce, are you all set on that? Any you okay in that answer? Well, I'm not happy with the answer, but... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Jones. Sidewalks are not mentioned in this article, so I assume that this money will not be used for sidewalks. Uh, is that assumption valid? And also, do you anticipate touching the sidewalks using other money on Lock Road? Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Referred to uh, Mr. Welch or Mr. Jacobs, and Mrs. Hale. Mr. Welch? Uh, Mr. Jacobs? Oh, I have Mrs. Hale. Great. The chair welcomes Jennifer Hale, our Deputy Director of Public Works, to the microphone to answer Mr. Jones' question. Not to mention a fine lady. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the intention is to look at Lock as in, in entirety. Right now, the uh, there are not sidewalks on Lock Road. Um, there is not an intention to put one there. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Hale. Anyone else on Article 20? Article 21, shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $486,231 for improvements to streets consisting of A, paving overlays, B, adjustments to structures to permit paving, repairs and replacements to drainage, D, repairs and replacements to sewers if needed for pavement repair, E, repairs to sidewalks and driveway openings, F, Crack ceiling and curbing installation, and G, improvements and repairs to the town parking lots and parking areas. Upon completion of the work scheduled in this warrant article, if funds remain unused, the Department of Public Works may proceed to the next street on their priority repair list until said unused portion is spent. Said appropriation to be offset by the State Highway Block Grant estimated to be $323,509. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation for RSA 32 colon 7, Roman numeral 6, and shall not lapse until the projects are completed or by March 31st, 2022, whichever occurs sooner. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen, <coughs> five to nothing. Recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee, eight to nothing. Fiscal impact note, the estimated 2020 tax impact of $162,722 is 0.043 per $1,000 valuation, 4 cents, 4.3 cents per $1,000 of valuation. Anyone willing to speak or wishing to speak on Article 21? Mr. Jones. Please note that I'm asking a lot less questions than I normally do. It's my only form, so I'm restricting the questions to what I consider Doing important, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I assume priority repair list means the CIP, uh, Capital Improvement Program. Is that correct, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yes. Yeah. He's gonna yeah. up. yes, that's correct. Okay. When I last looked at the uh, CIP last year, I noted that the uh, Mace Road sidewalks were on the CIP plan in spite of the fact that the voters have rejected putting in new sidewalks on Mace Road. Is that still in the CIP? I believe it is. Question for the manager, is Mace Road, is it, uh, okay, who are we going to next? Uh, Jennifer, uh, is Mace Road, is it next year they were on the CIP? Give me one second. Okay. My concern isn't so much this year, next year, or any year. My concern is the voters said no twice. Right, correct. Right. And the fact that it's in the CIP alone is kind of offensive. To the voters, that is. No. Great. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Anyone else want to speak to Article 21? Article 22. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $303,000 for the purchase of the following vehicles and equipment for the Department of Public Works? Two three-quarter ton trucks with plows, one utility hotbox, and one 926M Caterpillar loader 
with any replaced vehicles to be traded in if deemed to be prudent by the Public Works Director, Town Manager, and the Board of Selectmen. Said sum of 303000 to come from the unassigned fund balance. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32 7 Roman numeral 6 and shall not lapse until these purchases are completed or by March 31st, 2022, whichever is sooner. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 5 to nothing. Recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee, 8 to nothing. Fiscal impact note, zero tax impact. Mr. Pierce would like to speak on Article 22. Uh, yes, it doesn't per pertain just to Article 22. It pertains to the ones that are taking money out of the uh, unassigned fund balance. Mm -hmm. My question is, when we, if these all pass, what will be left in the unassigned fund balance? What is the total amount? Question uh, for Mr. Pierce to Town Manager Welch. How much money will be left in the unassigned fund balance if all the Warren articles that are utilized in the unassigned fund balance pass in March of 2020? There's currently $8.8 .8 million in that fund, and we're proposing to take out approximately $1.5 million. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Anyone else have any comments on Article 22? We move on to Article 23. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $300,000 to be added to the Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund created under Article 16 of the 1998 Annual Town Meeting in accordance with the provisions of RSA 35 for the purpose of maintenance and or reconstruction of streets, recommended by the Board of Selectmen, five to nothing, recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee, eight to nothing. Fiscal impact note, the estimated 2020 tax impact on $300,000 is 0 0.080 per thousand dollar valuation, 8.0 cents per thousand dollars of valuation. As a side note, Mrs. Brado Russell, Mr. Pluff, and I were on the board that started this uh, capital reserve, and it, it's just been absolutely fantastic, and it just shows you how time flies. But anybody uh, want to speak to Article 23? Mrs. Woolsey. Good evening again. I don't mean to bore you. But I think that my colleagues might uh, agree with what I'm going to say. The most complaints I receive as a member of the Board of Selectmen are complaints about the roads, roads, roads. And sometimes as I drive up High Street coming up here, I'm thinking my car might fall apart with all the messes in the roads. We need to focus on roads. It's 2020. Let's get going. Thank you for your comments, Mrs. Woolsey. Anyone else have any comments for Article 23? Hearing none, Article 24. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $200,000 for the purpose of moving forward solutions with flood control design for the protection of the west side streets off of Ashworth Avenue, Brown Avenue, the Island Path and Glade Path areas north to Winnicunnet Road, including NH Route 1A and the areas surrounding Metal Pond, including High Street, Kings Highway, Gentian, Green, and Metal Pond Roads, the areas surrounding the Hampton Seabrook Estuary and all contributing waterways. Such solutions and flood control designs are those recommended by the flood studies conducted by the town and the town's consultants. Funds may be utilized for the design and permitting of final engineering plans and construction plans for bidding purposes. Funds may also be utilized for necessary work projects that are needed to facilitate the construction of flood and drainage facilities prior to the issuance of construction contracts. Said sum of $200,000 to come from the unassigned fund balance. This will be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32 colon 7, Roman numeral 6, and shall not lapse until the work is completed on March or by March 31st, 2024, whichever is sooner. Recommended by the budget, uh, by the Board of Selectmen, 5 to nothing. Recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee, 8 to nothing. Fiscal impact note, zero tax impact. Anyone wishing to speak to Article 24? Mr. Jones. Mr. 
This Warren article is really vague. It's going to put out, take $200,000 out of the unassigned fund balance to, quote, move forward solutions. And that's it. I mean, what are the solutions? We have no clue. Is it really, do we need 200000 Maybe we need 500000 Maybe we need 2000 I don't know what the number is. I don't know what the solution is being proposed there. So, so basically we're saying, yeah, give me $200,000 and we promise to do good things with it. That's what so I'm is hearing. Is that a comment or a question? I'm just trying to form Am a Am I question. hearing that accurate, Mr. Chairman? What, what, can you rephrase the question, sir? Sure. This is very vague. Essentially, it's saying, let us take $200,000 out of the unassigned fund balance to do good things relative to flood control. But we can't give you any specifics as to what we're going to do. You're just going to have to trust we're going to do the good thing, the right thing, and all that. Is that basically it, Mr. Chairman? To refer this question to uh, our Public Works Department, our Deputy Director, Mrs. Hale. Short and sweet answers. Um, the $200,000 is not just to be vague. It's to be used to progress everything that we're doing uh, to work on the flooding problems and the uh, sea, live, sea rise -ing that we're experiencing down on the Westworth. Wow, cannot speak today. West side of Ashworth Ave, the estuary, and Meadow Pond. Uh, right now, we have a plan in place. This is the way we've been operating. We have the studies with all the data being collected now, which will present solutions. Those solutions will then be turned using the money that we have been awarded to the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation into preliminary designs. This 200000 that we're asking for takes those and puts them into uh, the ability of construction docs and bid documents and also sets us up for future funding. To get future funding, you need to be able to put money on the table, and that is exactly what this would be, as well as to move the projects forward. Uh, it is exactly how we received the uh, grant that we um, were awarded uh, last month. The matching funds came from the studies that we started. So this is all part of a full plan to continue the progress to look towards solutions. Uh, with the ultimate goal to put them all under construction. Thank you, Mrs. Hale. Mr. Jones. If we had greater specificity or greater clarity on the specificity, such as you described, I mean, you referred to certain things that you are doing that are not necessarily visible to the public, certainly not visible to me, that would help me uh, move from a, what is this, to a positive vote. Flood is a very important thing to be dealing with in this town. There's no doubt about that. As far as I'm concerned, putting money aside for that is a good thing, but we need to do it in a in a way that's uh, uh, scientific from a physics perspective, but also scientific from a, a, a good management perspective. And when I see vague, uh, you know, things so vague like this, I, I, I'm concerned that it's just uh, we're not bringing enough management science to the table as a result. Now, I may just because of my view of things, I'm not seeing all the stuff I need to see. And I think the public, if they see this, will be more inclined to support this than they might otherwise. That's just a piece of advice. I am not opposed to this. I am not in favor of it. I'm looking for more specificity. Uh, but I hope to get that, not as an individual, but merely as a member consuming public information that everyone has access to. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Jones. <coughs> this is Carnaby. Thirty-five thousand of the forty-five thousand dollars. Here we go again. Here we is that better? Thirty-five of the forty-five thousand dollar grant that we were awarded for the master plan was to be specifically earmarked for the coastal section addressing flooding and other coastal issues, and is uh, was obtained for us through the Department of. Enviro DES, thank you, Department of Environmental yeah. Services, yeah. Um, so that we will bring in the firm that we selected to help us with this part of the plan has extraordinarily credentialed staff in the matters of coastal 
uh, concerns. And so I hope that our right hand and our left hand can put their hands together and work together on this. Um, we will bring great resources to help develop a plan for, and if you guys have the money to make it happen, that will be a truly wonderful thing. And no, the master plan will not sit on a shelf and collect dust. Thank you, Mrs. Carvey. Anyone else from the public wanting to speak to Article 24? Mr. Pierce. <clears throat> Yes, I think I share Mr. Jones' uh, position a little bit about the ambiguity in the uh, Warren article, but I'm concerned if we have a seawall today that's three feet high and the water rises, so we need a six-foot one uh, next year and the year after that we need an eight-foot one, are we shoveling against the tide? So my question is, there needs to be more specifics in the Warren articles if we want to spend money on what may be a waste of money. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Anyone else? Hearing none, Article 25. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to erase and appropriate the sum of $195,000 for the reconstruction of the High Street and Mill Road intersection to include the replacement of sidewalk approaches in accordance with ADA sidewalk construction and the installation of underground piping for future pedestrian signal improvements. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation RSA 32 colon 7, Roman numeral 6, and shall not lapse until the purpose is completed or by March 31st, 2025, whichever is sooner. Majority vote required. Note, the $195,000 does not include the required work on the traffic control and lighting system that is in need of replacement. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen, five to nothing. Recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee, eight to nothing. Fiscal impact note, the estimated 2020 tax impact on $195,000 is 0.052 per thousand dollar valuation, 5.2 cents for $1,000 evaluation. Mr. Pierce, you'd like to speak on Article 25. Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, it's a little ambiguous to me as to why we want 195 to do the uh, approaches and installation of underground piping for future pedestrian signal improvements when it says you can't spend money on this traffic control and lighting system, blah, blah, blah. Can somebody just explain to me a little bit more detail because that to me is very ambiguous. Thank you. Thank you. Can we just remind, before I call Mrs. Hale, for everybody coming to the TV and viewers at home, really speak into the microphone, okay? Pull that microphone closer to you, because you had a lot of great things to say. So I want to make sure whoever comes to the microphone, please uh, speak into it. Thank you. Mrs. Hale. All right. Is this better? Uh, basically, what the Warren article is uh, asking to appropriate money for is to reconstruct all four corners to be AD accessible. So it is a lot of site work, a lot of uh, wall within the existing right of way uh, that we have to work with. Uh, there's quite a bit of grade changes that have to be addressed. Uh, in addition, what we will do is we will set it up for uh, pedestrian uh, light push buttons and signals. The money that is not included in the Warren article is the actual traffic signal that goes with that intersection. Um, it will be all coordinated. We will have it so that it can work with uh, today's technology. A lot of this can be done wireless uh, and not with uh, full conduits through the ground. We'll work to do limit that. Um, but the part that is not included is new traffic signals uh, with this Warren article. Yes, not the post and not the lights that go overhead. Thank you, Mrs. Hale. Anyone else to speak on Article 25? Mr. Jones. Just a minor point that might prove important down the road. As you know, Mr. Chairman, ADA requires that new sidewalks be, you know, very wide, like five or six feet or something like that. Repaired the sidewalks do not have to meet that requirement. Yet the wording in this article refers to construction as opposed to repair. 
and I would suggest that we might be safer legally to use a, you know a word like repair or, or replace or something like that as opposed to construct. It's referring to uh, in accordance with ADA sidewalk construction as opposed to in accordance with ADA sidewalk repairs. I'm suggesting you change the word construction to repair. Mr. Jones, I'm going to refer to... Uh, <coughs> That's just a suggestion. Whatever you do with it, you want. Oh, well, you asked the question because... Uh, this is a does... suggestion, not a question. Okay, so you don't want the question... Either. Well, I'm happy to hear anybody's opinion. Okay. So, replacement is in the second line of the Warren article. Um, Attorney Gerald, did you want to... Do you feel comfortable with that Warren article as written that replacement is fine as far as the intent of the sidewalk, replacement of the sidewalks versus repair? I think you'd have to uh, refer to Ms. Hale for the actual scope of the work. Okay. <laughs> Mrs. Hale. I thought it wasn't a question. <laughs> <laughs> it's an opinion. As I'm not a lawyer and I don't play one on TV, the scope of the Warren article will be to reconstruct. So we're repairing stuff that doesn't work, but we are actually creating new things. So uh, the intent is to make them ADA accessible. There is width there. Uh, so I think that that covers us from the stance of whether we use the word repair, reconstruct, or construct. The idea is to make the approaches ADA accessible. Thank you, Mr. Hale. Mr. Jones. So the, the new stuff we're putting in, uh, that has to be like five or six feet wide. Is it true? Or, so we're making just the new stuff five feet, or we're making all of it five feet? The way the... The way the Warren article is, um, I think they can hear me. Uh, the way that the Warren article is written is to the approaches. We are not doing all the sidewalks, all on High Street. It's the four corners themselves, the landings, getting them set up to remove the steep grades that are there. And then as you come to the walkway, uh, the roadways, those uh, landings, those areas will be the accessible part. Am I right? Yes, it is just the approaches? Yes. Apparently the approaches do not exist today? They do not exist in a form that is what we want them to be. Mr. Jones. Thank you, Jennifer, as always, very informative. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Anyone else on Article 25? Hearing none, Article 26. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $183,039 for the cost of Hampton's contribution to 21 human service agencies in the Seacoast and the amounts corresponding to the agency's request in the right-hand columns as follows. These are all 2020 funding requests. American Red Cross, $2,000. Age Response Seacoast, $2,700. Area Home Care and Family Services, $12,000. Big Brothers and Big Sisters, $8,000. Child Advocacy Center, $1,250. Child and Family Services, now Waypoint, $6,000. Crossroads House, $15,000. Families First Health and Support Center, $10,000. Haven Violence Protection and Support Services, $7,500. Lamprey Health Senior Transportation Program, $4,200. New Generation Shelter, $2,000. One Sky Community Services, $5,100. Retired and Senior Volunteer Program, $1,800. Richie McFarland Children's Center, $10,500. Rockingham Community Action, $25,000. Rockingham Meals on Wheels, $7,389. Seacoast Family Promise, $2,500. Seacoast Mental Health Center, $8,000. Seacoast Visiting Nurse, $40,000. Seacoast Youth Services, $2,500. And Transportation Assistance for Seniors, otherwise known as TASC, $9,600. For total, $183,039.
these 21 human service agencies shall each be required to give a written report at the end of the calendar of fiscal year 2020 to the Board of Selectmen highlighting what the funds were used for and what the impact the funds had in assisting to achieve their goals and objective recommended by the Board of Selectmen 5 to 0, recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee 8 to 0. Fiscal impact note, the estimated 2020 tax impact of $183,039 is 0.049 per $1,000 valuation, 4.9 cents per $1,000 of valuation. Anyone willing to speak or wishing to speak on Article 26? Hearing none. Article 27. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $126,700 for the following purpose of the Parks and Recreation Department? A. Purchase playground equipment to replace old broken equipment for the library playground, $35,000. B. Skateboard park renovations in concrete work, $20,000. C. Landscape, tree, and invasive growth removal at Lou Brown Park, Skateboard Park, Eaton Park, and Tuck Park, $20,500. D, laser grading at Eaton Park to make safer playing conditions, $20,000. E, tennis courts and inline rink surface crack repairs, $9,500. F, recreation equipment maintenance, $4,000. G, recreation playground maintenance, $1,000. H, General building repairs, $3,000. I, skateboard park maintenance, $2,500. J, shed repairs, roof cleaning, and new doors for the K building, $6,700. K, replace two garage overhead doors, $4,500. All is determined by the Board of Selectmen, the Town Manager, and the Director of Parks and Recreation and to authorize the withdrawal of $126,700 from the Hampton Recreation Infrastructure Special Revenue Fund established for these purposes under Article 44 of the 2007 Annual Town Meeting. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen, five to nothing. Recommended by, by the Municipal Budget Committee, eight to nothing. There is zero tax impact for Article 27. Anyone wishing to speak? To article 27 hearing none article 28 shall the town of Hampton vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into a five-year lease purchase agreement for one Mac cab over refuse and recycling truck with a Labrie automated two-sided loader body unit in the amount of three hundred and fifty thousand three hundred ninety five dollars including interest the yearly payment being $75,500 and one MAC 16 yard, yard rear loading refuse and recycling truck and the amount of $237,090 including interest, the yearly payment being $51,000 and to raise and appropriate the sum of $126,500 to fund said lease purchase agreement in year one with said lease purchase agreement to contain a non-appropriation clause. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen, five to nothing. Recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee, six to two. Fiscal impact note, the estimated 2020 tax impact on $126,500 is 0 0.04 per thousand valuation, 3.4 cents per thousand dollars of valuation. Anyone from the public wishing to speak to Article 28? Hearing none. Article 29. Shall the Town of Hampton raise and appropriate the sum of $116,300 for the purpose of improving the radio and town emergency communication systems for the police, fire, public works, building, emergency management, and other departments of the town set appropriation to be offset by funds in the amount of $116,300 to be received in the fall of 2020 
from the state of New Hampshire under chapter 346 of the acts of 2019 House Bill 4 as unrestricted municipal aid recommended by the Board of Selectmen 5 to 0 recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee 8 to 0 again zero tax impact anyone from the public wishing to speak on article 29 No, we did, we did 28. You speaking to Article 29, Mr. Jones? Yes, sir. Although I would like an opportunity to speak to 28 if you give me permission, Mr. Chairman. Um, we have radio maintenance again, you know, our favorite line item in the budget, right? This is a nice warrant article. We're going to be spending money that we're going to get free from the state, it seems, and that's great. But doesn't that suggest that we won't be needing any radio maintenance in the budget? That's a question, Mr. Chairman. The chair welcomes to the uh, microphone our deputy town manager, Jamie Sullivan, regarding questions of radio maintenance in the budget. Uh, in response to that question, no, this does not eliminate radio maintenance. What this is for is in our capital improvement plan, our radio infrastructure will need to be redone. This money is going to help us move in that direction uh, by doing planning, engineering, to see what we need to accomplish moving forward. So there's no, no actual work, just planning. There will be actual work in that we'll have an engineer come in and look at our entire system to determine our needs and, and start us in the cost of direction, as well as this can help us offset other costs that are sure. part of it. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Mr. Jones. So what I'm hearing is essentially it's an engineering plan that we're, we're funding. One of many. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, will you afford me an opportunity to speak briefly on 28? Go ahead. Thank you. Um, 28 is a, is a five-year lease, uh, and unlike 19, which was a three-and-a-half-year contract, which is in that, that Article 19, is sambronized correctly, and, and I applaud you for doing that, um, this five-year lease contract is not sambronized. Why not? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, this, this particular article complies with the statutory requirements for lease purchase requirements. That is San Bernays in accordance with the statute. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Mr. Jones. Well, it may or may not fit the requirements of the statute is not San Bernays. I don't think what you're citing is a statute, I think, that doesn't require San Bernaysation, which is questionable. In any event, I'm not here to dispute that. But I do have another question. What is the effect? On, on subsequent default budgets if this article passes. The chair invites Mr. Jacobs, our director of public works, to the microphone to uh, help answer Mr. Jones' question. What the effect on the default budget is. Well, the question. Excuse me for a second, uh, Mr. Jones. Just be, I want to make sure when people when you speak, if you speak, wait till you can get to the microphone so that the people at home can hear you. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Jacobs. The payments are level for five years, and I think that's meets the standardization, if that's the term. Um, there is no um, variable interest rate. There is no. Um, increase in payment over said years. Um, its impact on future tax rates, I don't believe I, or I'm not sure anyone can answer because none of us really know what the future tax uh, evaluation of the future years is. Thank you, Mr. Jacobs. Mr. Jones. My question is whether or not this number is going to get thrown in the default budget in subsequent four years if this article passes. And I'm hearing the answer yes, right, Mr. Welsh? Mr. Welsh. The statute requires that this be in the regular budget plus the default budget in order to comply with the statutory requirements for this particular type of, of appropriation, which is a straight lease, lease purchase. If it's, not, if it's not approved in either, then it, the, the lease purchase is void. 
Thank you, Mr. Welch. Mr. Jones. So, you know, there is an RSA out there that says if you have a five-year contract, it needs to get a 60% approval. But of course, the exceptions are being made as, as accommodations are constantly being made at the State House and rewriting laws disfavoring the voters and taxpayers. So this remains a point of confusion for me. It is inconsistent with el other elements of the budget law, RSA 32, specifically the one regarding uh, the 60% uh, requirement that I noted earlier. And um, I thank you for confirming that it will go into the fall budget, Mr. Welsh. Uh, and also, Mr. Chairman, this is the only article that the Budget Committee was not un unanimous on. So congratulations on the two individuals that stood up. Uh, I'd like to know who they were, and, and maybe they could speak as to why they opposed this. I would well, like to know. This being a public hearing, I would, two individuals will not comment. I would like to know at some point. Article 30. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $90,000 to carry out all lawful functions allowed under federal, state, and local criminal justice forfeiture programs to authorize the withdrawal of said sum of $90,000 from the Police Forfeiture Special Revenue Fund created for that purpose under Article 55 of the 2003 town meeting, majority vote required, recommended by the Board of Selectmen, five to nothing, recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee, eight to nothing, Zero tax impact. Anyone wishing to speak? This is an article that's pretty much on every year. Hearing none. Article 31. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise an appropriate sum of $85,000 for the purpose of interior building improvements at the Department of Public Works main offices? Improvements include the installation of an air filtration system within the main office to filter fumes and other airborne particles from entering the existing office space. It also includes the renovation of the existing kitchen bathroom meeting area to provide separation of the existing spaces to be able to facilitate meetings at the DPW office to provide a location to have breaks and meals that doesn't double as a meeting space in bathroom entrance and to update the bathroom for unisex use. Said sum of $85,000 to come from the unassigned fund balance, this shall be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32 colon 6 and shall not lapse until the purpose is completed or by March 31st, 2023, whichever is sooner. Majority vote required, recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 5 to nothing, recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee, 8 to nothing. Again, zero tax impact. Anyone wishing to speak? to Article 31. Hearing uh, Mrs. Wolsey. We can hark back to 1995 when Chairman Warburton and I saw to the closing of the dump and, and the restructuring of public works in the landfill we are so fortunate to have public works. It is, I think, our responsibility to upgrade what they have over there. It's been neglected over the years. This is a small price to pay with no, no uh, tax impact. And public works is such a hard working department in this town. They need at least decent and reasonable accommodations down there. Please vote for this article. Thank you, Mrs. Woolsey. Anyone else in the audience wishing to speak? Hearing none. Article 32. Shall the town of Hampton vote to create a recycling revolving fund in accordance with the provisions of RSA 31 colon 95-H 1A and RSA 149M colon 4 Roman numeral 19 and Roman numeral 20 to which shall be deposited all <coughs> funds received as income, fees, and charges from the receipt or sale of recyclable materials and recycling including but not limited to A, materials that can be used to produce marketable goods, including but not limited to clear and colored glass, aluminum, ferrous and non-ferrous metals, plastics, corrugated cardboard, vehicle batteries, tires from vehicles, 
paper, demolition materials, yard and earth materials, and any other materials that are collected, deposited with, charged for, reprocessed and recycled for a further or new use by the town of Hampton or by others. Funds derived from such recycled materials shall be deposited into the recycling revolving fund. The money in the fund shall be allowed to accumulate from year to year and shall not be considered part of the town's general surplus. The town treasurer shall have custody of all monies in the fund and shall pay out the same only upon the order of the Board of Selectmen or the town manager without further approval of the legislative body open paren, town meeting, close paren. Such funds may be expended only for the purposes for which the fund was created, which is for the receipt, processing of recyclable materials, their collection, separation, storage, loading for shipment, the shipment of such materials, the purchase, replacement, and repair of recycling equipment, vehicles, and carts, and the collection, storage, loading, and transportation expense in the cost of recycling personnel, contractors services directly related to those functions and to establish funding for this account to raise and appropriate the sum of $80,000 to be placed in such account would said sum of $80,000 to come from the unassigned fund balance majority vote required <coughs> recommended by the Board of Selectmen five to nothing recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee eight to nothing again zero tax impact anyone wishing to speak to article 32 article 33 mr. Jones article 32 so we're creating this revolving funds a new revolving fund and we're going to put in eighty thousand dollars is that correct what is how did we get to eighty thousand dollars what is magical about eighty thousand dollars why not eight hundred thousand dollars why not eight dollars where did eighty thousand come from mr chairman mr jones has a question regarding article 32 why the number eighty thousand do we have anyone that would like to uh, take a stab at that answer mr welch our town manager thank you Mr. Chairman, after looking at the expenses that are entitled, to, uh, we are entitled to spend for recycling and the recycling propositions that we are currently undergoing with the town, we estimated that we needed additional seed money to start this process so that money would revolve in, we'd have money there. The $80,000 was put in because that was the best estimate we could make at the time. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Mr. Jones. So the purpose of this article is not simply to create a revolving fund, but also pay for 2020 expenses, I guess. Fair? Mr. Welch. <clears throat> I think the article reads for itself. It says it's to accumulate funds in a particular article so we can offset expenses and get them off the tax rate. These deal with recycling and recycling items only that the town has been currently spending money to in fact take care of. If we can take that off the tax rate and do it from income received to, to, to accept those funds and for the sale of those funds, then the tax rate will be lowered or not impacted by that particular operation, which right now is uh, accumulating uh, very quick increases because of the position of the Chinese who don't want to take recycling anymore and the cost of, uh, in fact, processing that material, which is going to become an impact. We decided to try to take that impact off the taxpayers and uh, make some fund that will pay for what we have to do with it as opposed to discontinuing recycling altogether. Thank you, Mr. Welch. Mr. Jones. All I heard was this article is about a revolving fund being set up, which I support a revolving fund being set up for this purpose. Uh, as far as the $80,000, it's not clear to me uh, why that's a good number or not a good number. Thank you.
Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Anyone else from the public? Article 33. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 for the purpose of participating in the FEMA Advanced Assistant Grant Program that will reimburse the town 75% of the town's expenses in the grant program based on the expenditure of $50,000 in completing the program requirements with said appropriation to be funded from the unassigned fund balance. This funding will enable the town to establish a process to prioritize, manage, and administer requests for hazard mitigation grant program funds by Hampton on behalf of these property owners interested in elevating their structures or selling their vulnerable properties to the town within the FEMA flood hazard area that areas that are or will be subject to sea level rises utilizing private and federal funds. Majority vote required, recommended by the Board of Selectmen 4-0 with one abstention, recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee 8 to 0, again, zero tax impact. Anyone wishing to speak to Article 33? Hearing none. Article 34. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 to conduct a transfer station improvements feasibility study to balance the changing rubbish and recycling markets as well as current operations. The facility will require modifications to be able to address needs to segregate materials, improve internal operations, and make building modifications and research alternatives for disposal. The study will provide recommendations facilitate immediate improvements such as the purchasing of storage trailers, dumping containers, earthwork, and provide planning level designs and cost for future appropriation requests. Said sum of $50,000 to come from the unassigned fund balance. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation by RSA 32-7, Roman numeral 6, and shall not lapse until the purpose is completed or by March 31st, 2024, whichever is sooner. Majority vote required. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen, five to zero. Recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee, eight to zero. Again, zero tax impact. Anyone from the public wishing to speak to Article 34? Hearing none, Article 35. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $50,000 for the purpose of removing trees from the High Street Cemetery in order to protect grave sites, gravestones, and abutting properties and roadways, such sum to be used by the tree warden to contract for the removal of the trees and for the restoration of said cemetery caused by such removal? and to authorize the tree warden in consultation with the Board of Selectmen, Town Manager, and the Cemetery Trustees to contract the work for said purposes, and to authorize funding said appropriation through the withdrawal of $50,000 from the principal in the Cemetery Burial Trust Fund, which has a principal balance of more than $500,000 generated from the sale of cemetery buri burial plots. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen, five to nothing. Recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee, eight to nothing. Anyone wishing to speak to Article 35? No. Hearing none, Article 36. Shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $40,000 to replace and equip a new vehicle for the fire prevention officer? This vehicle is utilized by the fire prevention officer to attend meetings at various sites conduct on-site inspections, and to respond to fires to investigate their origin and their cause. The vehicle carries all necessary tools to perform the work of the fire prevention officer, as well as his firefighter's turnout gear. Said sum of $40,000 to come from the unassigned fund balance, this shall be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32 7, Roman numeral 6 and shall not lapse until the purpose is completed or by March 31st, 2021, whichever is sooner. 
the majority vote is required recommended by the board of selectmen five to nothing recommended by the municipal budget committee eight to nothing fiscal impact again zero tax impact anyone wishing to speak to article 36 hearing none article 37 shall the town of hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of thirty two thousand dollars for the purpose of replacing the town office second floor west side heating system with a heat pump mini split system to include all labor materials and utility connections with set appropriation to be funded from the unassigned fund balance this shall be a non-lapsing appropriation per rsa 32 colon 7 roman numeral 6 and not and shall not lapse until the project is completed or by march 31st 2021 whichever occurs sooner recommended by the board of selectmen five nothing recommended by the municipal budget committee eight nothing zero tax impact as a side note i couldn't help but laugh at the budget committee mr brado mr puff and i and i absolutely agree with mr waddell when he brought when he brought this up about it's either 90 degrees or it's 40 below uh, believe me i was at home saying please vote on this I mean, so I, I love this article anyway anybody wishing to speak on article 37 hearing none article 38 shall the town vote to raise and appropriate the sum of twenty seven thousand five hundred dollars to be added to the firefighters turnout gear personal protective equipment capital reserve fund created under article 17 of the 2019 annual town meeting in accordance with the provisions of rsa 35 said sum of twenty seven thousand five hundred dollars to come from the unassigned fund balance majority vote required <coughs> recommended by the board of selectmen five to nothing recommended by the municipal budget committee eight to nothing zero tax impact anyone wishing to speak to article 38 hearing none article 39 shall the town of hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of twenty four thousand five hundred dollars <coughs> to purchase a new mid-size pickup truck equipped with a two-way two-way radio for the building department with a replaced unit a 2012 pickup truck to be traded in or sold if deemed to be prudent by the building inspector the town manager and the board of selectmen said sum of twenty four thousand five hundred dollars to come from the unassigned fund balance this shall be a non-lapsing appropriation per rsa 32 colon 7 roman numeral 6 and shall not lapse until the purchase is completed or by march 31st 2021 whichever is sooner majority vote required recommended by the board of selectmen five to nothing recommended by the municipal budget committee eight to nothing zero tax impact anyone wishing to speak to article 39 hearing none article 40 shall the town of hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of twenty thousand dollars for the purpose of conducting two household hazardous waste collection days during calendar year 2020 and to authorize the board of selectmen to permit the towns of newcastle and hampton falls to participate in said collection days at their own expense and to apply for accept and expand expend for such purpose any funds from the state of new hampshire the federal government any private sources may be made available majority vote required recommended by the board of selectmen five to nothing recommended by the municipal budget committee eight to nothing Fiscal impact, the estimated 2020 tax impact on $20,000 is 0 0.005 per 1,000 valuation, five tenths of one cent per thousand dollars of valuation. Anyone wishing to speak to Article 40? Hearing none, Article 41. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of 20,000 to be placed in the Hampton Conservation Commission Fund this fund to be used to acquire, maintain, improve, protect, or limit the future use of, or otherwise conserve and properly utilize open space and conservation easements in Hampton in accordance with RSA 36-A sections one through four, inclusive majority vote required. Fiscal impact. 2020 on $20,000 is 0 0.005 per thousand dollars, five tenths of one cent per thousand dollars of that of valuation. Anyone speak to Article 41? Hearing none, Article 42. Article 42, we don't have to uh, do. No money on that one. We need uh, Article 44. 
On the petition of Kristen Russell and at least 25 Hampton registered voters, shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate $3,000 to pay to Experience Hampton Inc., the organizer of the 2010 to 2019 Hampton Christmas Parades, to help defray the expenses of the 2020 Christmas Parade and related activities. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen, five to nothing. Recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee, eight to nothing. Fiscal impact, the estimated 2020 tax impact on $3,000 is 0 .001 per thousand valuation, one tenth of one cent per thousand dollars of valuation. Anyone wishing to speak on Article 44? Hearing on Article 45, on the petition of G. Berkeley Bennett and at least 25 Hampton registered voters, shall the town of Hampton raise and appropriate $6,500 to reimburse the American Legion Post 35, the Hamptons, for the purchase of 200 bronze service flag holder grave markers. American Legion Post 35 would, with the assistance of community volunteers, place or replace the markers so that the town of Hampton may continue to properly honor the graves of our veterans and the High Street and other Hampton cemeteries. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 401 abstention. Recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee, 8 to 0. Fiscal impact, the estimated 2020 tax impact on $6,500 is 0 .002 per thousand valuation, two tenths of 1% per thousand dollars of valuation. Anybody have any comments on Article 45? Hearing none, Article 46. As petitioned to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the amount of $500 for Step Up Parents. Step Up Parents is a New Hampshire-based 501c3 that provides financial assistance and support to grandparents and relative caregivers who have stepped up to raise the children of parents struggling with substance abuse disorder. These funds are used to provide help with needs not met through traditional state and local funding for such things as the cost of summer camp, music lessons, sports camps, daycare, food, clothing, automobile repairs, rent and gas. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen, five to nothing. Recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee, eight to nothing. Fiscal impact on $500 is .0001 per $1,000 valuation, 100 of one cent for $1,000 of valuation. Anyone wishing to speak on Article 46? Hearing none, before we, uh, Mr. Pierce, are you gonna speak? Okay, Mrs. Woolsey, okay, go ahead, Mr. Pierce. Yes, Michael Pierce, uh, 84 Lock Road again. Again, I would like to see the Warnacles on the website so we can follow this if we aren't attending tonight. That, that's there, it should be used. We're paying for it, let's use it. Let's keep the voters informed. Let them read the war knuckles as we're talking about them tonight so they can make an informed decision on how they want to vote come up to voting day. So both the school and the town need to have them out there at least a day or so in advance so people can be warned about what's happening tonight. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Mrs. Woolsey. Yes, as we're closing this uh, annual celebration that we have every year in the budget, I just have a couple of comments for you. First of all, uh, I thank the budget committee. It is a difficult job. You give up your personal time. And uh, since I have served seven terms as a member of the budget committee, I certainly appreciate what you do. The other thing I want to say this evening is that I really appreciate what uh, Mr. Worcester Welsh has done for us this year. I counted 16 articles, 16 out of 46 articles that have zero tax impact. That took a lot of hard work and a lot of focus. I think the town should be very happy to be in a situation where we are happy. having such focused management. I'm really, really proud of our, uh, our department heads 
and everyone who has helped to put the budget together. So thank you so much, all of you, for your service. We really appreciate your contribution to this community. And when everybody goes to vote, they'll think of their nice budget committee who worked hard. Thank you, Mrs. Woolsey. Uh, before we adjourn, a couple housekeeping for my fellow budget committee members. You'll notice on the town website there is a scheduled meeting for next Tuesday, January 21st. We, I don't feel we'll need to meet. We've gotten through the public hearing. Uh, we Next time you'll see us, and along with hopefully lots of residents, is at our deliberate session here at 8.30 a.m. on Saturday, February 1st. And also the next budget committee, we will be reviewing the village district budget on Tuesday, February 18th, 2020. In closing, I want to thank the department heads. I want to thank the town management. It has been a wonderful year. We have come here to public hearing with great communication, great teamwork. I want to thank my fellow budget committee members for an unbelievable year. We have worked well together. We have communicate, communicated responses to the public in a timely manner, and I can't thank the town enough for all the uh, information. I want to thank our selectmen's rep, Mr. Bridal, our Hampton School Board rep, Virginia, uh, Virginia Bridal Russell, our Hampton Village <coughs> District rep, uh, Robert Ladd. Remember, the three of them are assigned or appointed to the Budget Committee as members from the boards. They have been very influential and very instrumental in us understanding what goes on in their various budgets in a regular routine. Um, I want to thank Channel 22, folks, the Channel 13. I want to thank Keith Lassad, our uh, Senior Director of Facilities here at, at the uh, Hampton School District for a wonderful job that he did in this wonderful facility. Can't thank you all enough. Thank you all for coming. We'll see you on February 1st. Thank you to the viewers at home. Have a great night. We adjourn, uh, motion to adjourn by Mr. LeBranch at 8.57. 8.57, seconded by Mr. Pluff. All those in favor? Unanimous, thank you.